No matter how many times I look at Elizabeth Cotton and playing the guitar, I, I, I never fail to be amazed. It's a regular guitar, but she's playing it left-handed, so her, her thumb plays the high notes and her finger plays the low notes. Uh, to those of you who have never heard her before, I might explain that her method of picking is now known around the nation among guitar pickers as cotton picking. <laughs> Libba, how in the world did you get started on this kind of guitar playing? Well, I first learned on my brother's banjo, a five-string banjo. I used to take it down when he'd go to work. He kept it hanging on the wall. When he'd go to work, I'd sneak up and get his banjo. And the first thing I'd do, I'd start running the screws up and down. I don't know why. I didn't know what this tune right or wrong. But that's what I would start doing. Yeah. Break a string. How old were you then? Oh, I was quite a kid. I don't know. Then I'd put the banjo on the bed with the string broke. He'd come in from work. She's done it again. Then I'd hide get behind the door, sometimes sneak up under the bed, any place. He wouldn't do anything but scold me. Sometimes he wouldn't put the strings on in a long time. Think he's punishing me, but I'd pick three strings, four strings. Didn't have to be five. I'd play it anyway. And that's how I started learning to play string on a banjo. Well, it's beautiful. Play, play another one. Remember the one you were playing me? Mama, your papa loved you. You like to hear that? Mm -hmm. You ought to know that uh, Elizabeth Cotton, Libba, was born and raised down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, but she came to know my family up in Washington, D.C. 
And uh, as I said earlier, she never thought of being a professional musician. She just played a little music when she was young for the fun of it, and she actually stopped playing the guitar for many years. Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. When I joined the church, they told me not to play the ragtime songs and be a member of the church. And I well, what playing. got started you playing again? Well, when I come to Washington to live, I applied at the department store for a job. I worked at Landsberg department store. They gave me a job to sell dolls. I was just there for the holidays. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Mrs. Seeger, Mike Seeger, mother walked My in with two sisters, Pete's yeah. stepmother. She came in with two fine-looking children. That was Peggy and Barbara. She bought two dolls, one for each child. While she was waiting for the dolls to get wrapped, Peggy got lost in the store. I happened to be the one to find her to bring her in to her mother. Peggy was crying, and I never could stand to see children cry much. When I brought her in, the tears was coming down on my cheeks. So Mrs. Seeger says to me, have you worked here long? I says, no. She says, well, if you ever decide to stop working here, here's my telephone number, give me a ring. I said, yes, I'll do that. So after New Year's, I stopped working at Landsberg Department Store. I decided to give Mrs. Seeger a ring. She says, come right out. The same day I went out, she started me to work. And I worked for her 10 years. She was a folk singer, music writer. They had two pianos, guitars, banjos, mandolins, all, all kind of string music. Because that made me think about what I used to do, play a guitar a little bit in a banjo. So Peggy kept her guitar in the kitchen hanging. So when Mrs. Seeger would go in to start her music, I'd get the guitar and go in the dining room, close the door so that I couldn't be heard. So I was in playing freight train. I was just playing it away. Peggy and Michael walked in. They said, well, Libba, we didn't know you could play a guitar. Well, there's nothing to say I was playing the guitar. So Peggy says to me, what was the song you're playing? I says, freight train. She says, would you teach me how to play that song? I says, certainly. So from that, I started learning Michael and Peggy. Nights at dinner time, I'd cook dinner and put my dinner on the table. And that's about all the work I'd have to do. The kids would clear the table, wash my dishes, tell me to sit down and play freight train. So I wouldn't have much work to do after I cooked dinner. <laughs> and they had a lot of boys and girls after the found that I could play, that all of them would join in and help clear the table, wash up the dishes, and do everything. Libba, uh, we have time for a couple more. Before you play Freight Train, would you play that Wilson rag? Yes. Uh -huh.
you'll have to sing Freight Train. Let me retune a moment, though. Tell, uh, while I'm retuning, you tell them how you made up the song when you were young. Well, it's, it's a kind of a long story. Because where we live, we can watch the train. The train would get stalled on a track almost a certain place all the time. What does bringing the students into Chapel Hills University and the students come there from all over the country for school. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, when they'd go home and come back, the trains were loaded. We seldom had over two or three coaches. They would be rammed and packed. But where we lived, you couldn't see the faces from the windows, but you could see the the wave from the windows when they when they wave the you better start the song though. packages. Nine as she 